took me some time to get to the place that you wanted me to be. Hey guys and welcome to Little Blackbird 91. We are sitting down with Dom from Ready to Love. Yes, if you've been watching the latest season, you know Dom, he was one of the leading favorites at the very beginning and Mika was very interested in him as well. Um, and he also has connections with Vanessa too. So uh, we are looking forward to having a real good uh, in-depth conversation uh, with Dom and really get into grips of his journey on the show. But hey, Dom, how you doing today, man? I'm awesome. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. I can't lie to you, you know. The Lord has been good, and I'm living, I'm breathing, and I'm eating good, as they say. So I'm, I'm really you. good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No worries, my guy. Not a problem at all. Before we get deep today, let's first and foremost do what we call human verification. We want to make sure that you are actually a human being. You know, you're handsome, brother. You know, we want to make sure that you're not the AI or robot, you know? Um, so here's one of my questions. You are on a plane okay and it can and it can land anywhere you like where would you want that plane to land it could be any country any place it's gotta be zanzibar Ooh, why yeah. zanzibar man that was a place that uh i plan on spending my honeymoon if i ever got married but i'm still not married so i think i'm on <laughs> i may go there before i get married you gonna take yourself there yeah i'm uh, probably going the next couple of months that's all it is, baby. That's all it is. Yeah, me. I hear it. Um, second question um, is, second question is, um, you, yourself, iPhone or Android? Android. Ooh. Android, man. It's, uh, I'm loyal. So once I like something, I don't want <laughs> nobody else to say it. <laughs> so my mom has one. My dad has an Android. So yeah, team, team Android. I'm not mad at it. Listen, it's Android about it is. Huh? I get jumped on a lot for my phone, but it going one in and out the other. Listen, I'm not going to be mad at you. I'm Android. I've got Android here. So Huawei, i got, you know what I'm saying? i got the Samsung as well. And yeah. I've got iPhone. I, I, I'm a bit, you know, I was loyal to the Android and I decided to, you know, jump over a little bit, just a little bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. So just a tiny bit, you know? Um, and final question is cereal or the milk in the bowl first, my guy? Um, man, I, I've heard you ask this question before. And it's both, you know. Mm. On, the time. First bowl, on the first bowl, cereal first. On the second bowl, milk, then cereal on top of the milk. Now, why are you going to do that? I mean, because you you still got some milk left, so you want to add some cereal to it. Right. I get it. That's sensible. I get it. All right, listen, you've passed our human verification. Uh, we believe you are a human being, so welcome uh, to the show. Uh, let's get deep yeah we're going to talk about obviously your life outside of the show first before we get into your journey on rtl so let's get deep my first question is who is dom and what is dom's story okay man i'm trash at talking about myself uh i tend to over summarize things but i'm gonna try to be as in-depth as i need to be um so born and raised in nashville tennessee uh you know grew up Mom, dad, they were together until I was six. Um, my sister was born when I was five. They broke up shortly after my sister was born. You know, so they um, they tried to do co-parenting. Um, so we went from my dad's house one week, mom's house one week. We did that for as long as we could until me and my sister started to build preferences as to whose house we wanted to be over more. My dad's house was more like a bachelor pad, you know, um, and he was a little bit of a player, you know, so. You know, he's having house parties, women coming in and out, you know, but a good time. My mom's house, that's where we had the gaming systems. We had the candles, the comfort of just being amongst your mother. Um, so that went on for, I mean, pretty much the entirety of my childhood is being equally involved almost um, between my mom and dad's house. So <sighs> my mom, um, mom's beautiful woman, uh, she lost both of her parents uh, when she was 11. Um, so I think that impacted how she treats me and my baby sister. Um, so she um, she's very protective, not overprotective, but very protective, very involved mother. And I feel like me and my sister, we're, we're her world. Dad, on the other end, he grew up with a full family. Um, so uh, he had his mom, had his dad, had six, seven brothers that were by the same parents. I know a lot of people that my grandfather had 23 kids. I, I mentioned that earlier. Uh, but of course, they weren't all by one woman. So 
eight of them was by no nine of them was by my grandmother. Um, so my, my grandpa's had a lot of children. Um, so yeah, my dad, um, dad was very involved, uh, never missed a basketball game, football game. He was always there. Um, you know, people always have to add a, uh, say my dad wasn't perfect. I mean, no, nobody's perfect. Uh, my mom, uh, she was, uh, she was solid. So, you know, they, they did a good job, you know, grew up after my mom and dad broke up, you know, of course we went from two incomes to one. My mom kept a, kept a boyfriend, but we still kind of lived in the hood. So, you know, after they broke up, we went straight to the project. So I'm over the projects when I'm with my mom, then go to my dad and we kind of in the house, but or whatever. But, um, so yeah, so, um, the projects at a seven, eight, nine year old, it's the absolute best place for a kid to be because you're around so many kids, you know, so you're not really aware of some of the negativity that's going around as far as like the street stuff. And, you know, you don't really get impacted by the street stuff and the projects until maybe if it's in your household or if you're old enough to really see what's going on. So, um, the projects, my memories of the projects are some of the best times of my life, you know, so we, uh, eventually upgraded in uh to section eight you know so um then we, we got a house on section eight and still in the hood but it was uh it was a great another great time uh, had a lot of friends um but we we moved around a lot you know what i'm saying so you know uh, in the states one thing that a lot of people don't know about is like if you if you're a single woman and you have uh if you're taking government assistance then a man can't be in the house so a lot of women are kind of forced to either hide a man or just not have one at all because they don't want to jeopardize. And um, that's one of the things historically, I think that has kind of held the black community back because, you know, women are eligible to get assistance that sometimes men can't get. Um, so, uh, so you know, we, my mom was, she was sneaky enough to, to you know, still have a boyfriend and for us to still live where we lived at. And um, I had an amazing childhood um, with my grandfather having so many so many children i had a lot of cousins and we were around the same age and um you know i would want that for my children as well i mean just to have because like, i don't really need any friends i had friends but when you got so many cousins that are men that's your age you don't really need uh anything more than that you know so uh i did have friends you know they lived in my neighborhood they didn't come from the same background that i did me on one hand i got a lot of uncles i had my father around had my mother who kept a, you know, she was she was married at one point and but she kept a, a, a decent, solid dude around. So I had a little more male influence than a lot of my peers, you know. So when a lot of my peers were in gangs, I was contemplating joining, but I had to figure out how was I going to hide my flag from my from my father, you know. So that kind of deterred me from just really uh, some of the curiosities I had as a young man, you know. So. Um, I was always a very mediocre student, um, pretty good athlete, but very, uh, I wasn't studious at all. I wasn't interested in any subjects, um, but I was always uh, smart enough to pass. Um, you know, so um, I, I applied minimal, minimal effort uh, in regards to just school and stuff, but uh, still graduated. Um, around about 16, I picked up, uh, picked up some traits uh, from where I'm from. Uh, started started selling weed, you know. So um, my initial goals was for me to buy a car, you know. So um, one of my cousins found out, and my cousin who he was in the streets as well, he found out that I was I was hustling, and um, he took me for a ride one day, and he asked me like, you know, what what's your plan? Like, why why are you doing this? And I told him I, I want to buy a car, and he was like, man, if you want a car, should I buy your car? And he ended up buying me a, a 87 box Chevy, you know what I'm saying? So uh, for me, that was enough for me at the time to stop. So had a car going into my senior year, uh, stopped selling drugs, got a girlfriend my senior year. And she was probably one of the most important women uh, that I've ever met because I was just so immature. I felt like I was dating like a 39 year old woman. Um, she was uh, she was good with her money. Um, she she told me quotes that still stick to me to this day uh and she completely changed the way that i thought you know and um she kind of set a foundation of what i look for in women still to this day and um i love 
I'm attracted to intelligence. And uh, she, she set that foundation. You know, um, she had high standards. Um, she had no business being with me, you know, to be honest. You know, but um, but uh, she she whipped me into shape. She changed the way I, I think. And uh, we still have a good relationship to this day. And I was close to her and her mom. And even as a young man, I felt like I could, could, could confide in her mom more than I could mine. Just because, you know, my mom was a disciplinarian, you know, and she had to be just because she had to offset what was going on outside of the house. You know what I'm saying? So um, I, I grew up, uh, I never was really good at, uh, I wasn't really taught how to feel. Uh, didn't necessarily know how to express myself as a young man. Um, and that, that, that led to more things uh, to come in my future. But, um, you know, I became dismissive of my emotions. Just uh, sometimes you try to do what's right versus doing um, doing what you feel. You know, so um, saying so, that just come from a household. My household um, could come from a very acts of service household. So, um, you'll never question how much somebody loves you, but you'll never be, you'll never hear that, you know, I love you, you know. So, um, so I didn't need to hear. I still still to this day, like, show me, you know. So, um, but yeah, um, so yeah, uh, me and a young lady, we break up and, uh, you know, um, 18, 19 years old, I have insecurities that I adopted from my environment. And some of those insecurities were about money. You know, where I'm from, dudes are 14, 15, 16 years old being called broke. And, and me, I'm a dude in high school who only had two pair of jeans, you know, maybe uh, two two or three shirts. And I'm trying to wear my Monday shirt with my Wednesday shirt, hoping I'll spill Kool-Aid on my shirt, you know, just because I'm, I'm trying to have having to finesse, like, you know, what am I going to wear on Thursday? So I don't really have clothes. So uh, luckily, I went to a very poor high school. So no one else had clothes either. It was a few people that were fresh. And of course they got, uh, they got more attention, you know? Um, so some of those insecurities from my neighborhood, uh, I brought into my young adulthood and, you know, that, that led to me picking up more bad habits of, uh, trapping what we call it, you know? So I started back trapping at 19 and, at this point, I'm in straight superficial mode. For one, I want to move out my mom's house. And for two, um, I want superficial things. So I want to put rims on my car. I want to put uh, JL audios in, in the back. I want to, you know, so I'm, but very for superficial reasons and mo more so because I'm insecure. Um, so I brought that neighborhood mentality to college with me. Um, so I lived off campus, had, had a fly apartment. Uh, nice car and you know whatever and uh <clears throat> and uh was was going to school still being a mediocre student um but um I was able to graduate you know so um you know I graduated because like even though I was selling drugs all day um I still wanted to be able to tell my mom you know they're like hey I'm doing something you know so I may I may go catch 12 12 snaps you know we call them snaps like you know whatever but uh and my mama called me and I'd be like, hey, mama, you're about to go study. You know what I'm saying? So that was important to me. You know, so I uh, ended up graduating college. And, uh, you know, I told myself if, if I could make it out of the streets that I was going to, um, I was going to, uh, I to stop. You know what I'm saying? So I went through a lot, uh, getting shot at, uh, pistol put to my head, just a little different stuff that, some people will call it traumatic, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. So here I am, uh, graduated, um, and proud of myself. I love that, bro. I, yeah. Honestly, I, pre I appreciate that, you know, giving us that good expo expulsion about, you know, a bit about your life. I mean, it just allows us to kind of just be able to tap in a bit as well and I appreciate you even sharing that because I know there's a lot of deep things that were yeah. that happening there so let me let me let me touch on the back end of what you just just shared because my eyes went like that now obviously you know a bit of trapping happens you know what I mean you want you want to make it out of the hood you want to make it out of that life you know you're studying at the same time as well and then obviously you talk about obviously uh you know being 
uh, shot at. So uh, tell me a little bit more about this. Let's, let's dive into that a little bit more. Let's get deep on that. Mm -hmm. You got shot at. What happened that you were in a place where you could get shot at? Was wrong time, wrong, wrong place? Or was this a part and parcel consequence of the actions you were taking at that point in time? I don't know. It wasn't necessarily meant for me, you know, um, but it was meant for someone who I was really close to. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we were somewhere that we probably weren't supposed to be and um, had a dispute. And, and one thing led to another. The, the bullets were actually hitting my side of the car. And, uh, yeah. you know, one thing about being shot at, you know, a lot of people have been shot, shot at, whatever. Um, you learn a lot about yourself as far as, like, how you would handle certain situations. And, you know, for me, I was extremely calm. I just leaned back in my seat as they were shooting. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, that was it. And I remember, you know, I didn't have a pistol at the time. You know what I'm saying? So first thing I, first thing I did, hit my homie up, and uh, I've been strapped ever since. So for you, obviously, at the time, you said you leaned back. What was what was the thought process behind leaning back? Um, I guess in the moment, I'm thinking like, okay, maybe at least the bullets ain't going to come through the window. The bullets got to go through the car and penetrate and hit me. You know what I'm saying? So I just leaned back thinking like, okay, maybe the car, uh, the metal of the car stopped the bullets. You know, so they probably shot, it wasn't like they had a, a assault rifle. They probably shot maybe eight, nine times, you know what I'm saying? But they were shooting, they were definitely shooting on my side. You know, so, you know, that, uh, that was something that happened and I moved on from it. I, I didn't think about it again. I just I grabbed, grabbed a pistol and, and kept it moving. So you, 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 you didn't get hit once? No, I didn't. I didn't, but the bullets definitely hit my side. Damn. Yeah. So you said, obviously, you moved on. You didn't think about it. You, you didn't contemplate it. You didn't kind of register what actually happened. No, I moved on. I moved on. Wow. Yeah, I think I'm, so, okay. I'm 19, 20. Yeah. So, so, you know, that's, you know, who knows how to emotionally you know, manage that in life in general, but especially when you're, you're a teenager. Mm. That's, that's, that's quite a lot to go through. So obviously, look, obviously, like I said, you're looking back now. So obviously, yes, at the time you weren't feeling that, that fear maybe, or feeling even not even fear, but maybe it hadn't caught up to you yet. What, what about now though? So now looking back at it, what's the thought process looking back at young Dom and how do you feel that those moments have affected you today? Um, it made me more compassionate. You know, made me less just mental, um, more appreciative. Um, being in the streets a little bit as a young man, it, it made me, mm. now I can go anywhere. And I feel like, but let's just say if I'm in, I'm in London, if I get robbed in London, it's not gonna mess my day up. Hey. I'll be like, okay. Right. Matter of fact, like when I travel, I'm prepared to be robbed. Mm. I'm prepared to be robbed before I leave the house. Mm. Uh, and, and if someone were to pull a gun out on me, take my money, it wouldn't mess up my day because I only had fifty dollars on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I thought I was in London recently. Mm. I feel like the news was about to rob. Did he rob you? <laughs> they didn't. They didn't. Luckily, uh, I was at. Uh, have you been to LA Lounge? Ah, uh, I've heard of it. I haven't gone. I haven't gone. Yeah. No, it's, it's it's in East uh, East London. East London. Yeah, East London. Yeah, probably seven to eight minutes from Stratford. Yep. Yeah. So close to Stratford. Very popular. I was like, okay, I'm about to get robbed. You know, <laughs> but yeah, I just remember that look. I remember mm -hmm. that look. Uh, when, Would you uh, like to meet Mark in this country? Huh. We do like to meme mark in this country. I can tell. I can tell by the way I was being looked at. Mm. You know? Yeah, I can tell. I've I, I been known. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that the culture, as a culture, we uh, we're not we're not always as inviting as friendly. So that that can happen as well. So yeah. obviously, um, you know, obviously, like you said, you've got that mentality. And actually, I heard something even for business wise that. When things are positive, think negatively. When negative is happening, think positively. So in some sense, I actually get what you're saying, right? So it's like when things are going really well, always be prepared for something that could go, that could, that could happen, right? Yeah. So I definitely get that thought process 
and it not like like I said not messing up your day um because obviously of course you've got used to that kind of lifestyle you understand it you know you, your mind is mentally fortitude for that now no. taking us back okay so taking us taking us back because you've given us quite a good span of 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 your your livelihood and what you've gone through um taking us all the way back like I said mum and dad they split um you obviously get to live on both sides of tracks. So you get to live with mom and you get to live with dad. You get to experience different lifestyles for you personally. Yeah. How do you feel growing up in two different households affected you and the way that you look at relationships? Hmm. I don't know. It made me, uh, I won't even say that that had an impact on me, but not, like I was appreciative of them working out to some extent. You know, they didn't necessarily, you know how sometimes when you're 18, 19 years old, that person who's perfect for you at 19 may not be perfect for you at 27. And and that was the explanation of my mom and dad. Like, so even though they made a cute, very young couple, by the time they hit their mid to late 20s, uh, they were better off, you know, uh, separate. Um, so, um, I don't know how much of an impact that had on me relationship wise, because I was I was appreciative of it and I felt like uh and I benefited from it. I loved it, you know, just being being able to see both of my parents because uh I've always had the ability to scan and and see what you know how some some people say comparison is the thief of joy. Mm. Um for me I don't believe in that. I believe the only people who think comparison is a thief of joy are the people who are only looking up. You know, um, I know how to look around and I had that gift as a teenager. So I could see people who had more and sometimes that made me feel insecure. And I could also see people who live next door who lights, who didn't have their lights on and appreciate my lights. And mm -hmm. I've naturally always been like that. So now I, I was more so appreciative of my mom and dad being able to see both of them. Um, I don't, I don't register any negative impact they have had on me in rela relationship wise. It may have made me a little more careful. Um, just um, because like when, when I'm dating, I do try to quantify like, okay, is this somebody I can see myself for the, for eternity? And uh, that, that impacts how much I invest, okay. in, you know, in a woman. So that may be an extension of my, my mom and dad uh, splitting up, but, uh, but just to circle back, not to go too back. I feel like this is a very important part of my story. And uh, my mom, um, I, I got my high school sweetheart pregnant, you know, and and uh, we chose not to have it. She was more ready than me because she was she was 17, but she was 39, you know, so she was ready for whatever, you know. So it was more so my influence, you know, coming to her like, hey, I don't I don't think we should. She's like, OK, bet. you know, she, she ain't giving me a hard time. She didn't have the child. But somehow, when when my girl was pregnant, my mom, the mother's intuition, you know, second to none, mm. she walked into my room, and I'm senior in high school, or around that time anyway, and she told me, Dominique, uh, don't have, she said, don't make permanent decisions with temporary people. Mm. She didn't even know. That was. Uh, yeah, that was going on, but that stuck with me for the rest of my life. You know, and it, it, it even impacts how I move now. Like, I, I find myself quantifying how long can I really see this person being a part of my life before I invest in a person or, or, or whether I, you know, have children with a person, you know, because as much as I do want a family, uh, you know, I, it's important to me to have a solid, a solid wife and someone that I can see myself being with, you know. How long for you, then, does it take to qualify if you, if you can quantify to make that decision, you know, like uh, how, how, how long for you, if you can quantify it, does it take to make that decision where you're like, you know what, can I invest in you and will this be a long-term relationship? Two hours or two years. Um, you know, it's weird. It's so weird because I can meet a thousand women and I, I can, I'll meet one woman who I can just, and she just check my, she check it. She from day one, but I've also some of my best relationships. I didn't feel like that initially. We ended up getting to know each other over the course of eight nine months. And next thing I know, I'm crazy about this person. 
But I've met, there's been a few women I've met, so I was like, they they just made complete sense to me. So obviously you mentioned the, that relationship with the young lady at 17, gone on 39. Mm -hmm. um, and clearly that's been a relationship that's impacted you a lot because like I said, she was very mature and handled things in the right way that made you um, see things in a, in, a, in a different light. So you've mentioned obviously going from, it can be two hours to two years. Um, is that based on the practicality of what you've actually experienced? So you're saying that you've had different examples of different women that you've been with and it's taking that length of time to know. Why such a vast gap between the times for you? Yeah, it's based upon my experience. I, I've, <clears throat> I fail for people extremely fast. It, it, it is usually always, it, you know, turn around and bite me in my butt. Um, but 99.9% um, but .9 of the time, uh, I do have somewhat of a vetting process. Um, but there have been, there are the exceptions, uh, the exceptions to where like I meet someone and I'm like, dang, like, like I feel it, I feel it, you know, just from, from day one. Uh, everything they say is it, it matches on what I want my woman to say, and, uh, and not to say that those have been my best relationships because they haven't, but it, it happens every so often. So clearly the relationship in the past, obviously th that one at 17 is one that you mentioned. I, if I mentioned correctly, I don't remember you mentioned another relationship after that per se. So th clearly that was quite a impacting relationship. Aside that relationship, what other relationship really impacted you uh, um, that you had? All of them, you know, like, so mm. I probably had about four relationships. Um, mm. Since we were talking about me as a, like a foundation of starting from the beginning, yeah. Um, that's the relationship that I started with, but um, uh, I don't know if she watches stuff or not. But um, I, had, <laughs> I had I had one young lady. Uh, you know, she was a uh, she was a lady who I knew for five years before we actually started dating. Uh, you know, I thought she was uh, she was she was the the ish to me. You know, mm -hmm. um, and so we we started dating around the time I'm I'm graduating high school, and this around the time where I'm like, okay, I'm no more weed, no more cocaine, no more Lord tabs, you know, no more nothing, you know. So, you know, finances were were tight, you know, because um, I thought my college degree was going to, just like how most college students, you know, you graduate college, you think, okay, boom, you know, didn't happen. You know, it took, it took, a, it took about a year, maybe a year or two before I started making at least decent money, you know, so, mm. um, so yeah, um, so me and her dating, I'm, I'm broke as hell. She fine as hell, I'm broke. You know, uh, awesome girl. Um, and at this time I still got I still got the same pride from, and the same spending habits that I had from when I was trapped. You know, mm. there were times where I was broke and hustling. And there were times where I felt like I was big meech, even though I was nowhere near it. You know, um, so, you know, I'm broke, you know, dating her, you know, but I'm still paying all the bills, <clears throat> you know? So like we, uh, you know, we get into it regularly, um, but nothing that will ever break us up. So we together about a year and a half and, and like, you know, in my mind, I'm like, man, she do a lot of complaining for somebody who, who, uh, <laughs> you know, why ain't you left yet? You know, so in my mind, I'm thinking like, maybe she wouldn't because I'm paying all the bills. Cause like, you know, we, we had sexual chemistry for sure. Mm. Uh, physically we vibed. And she was an amazing woman, you know, but one thing, okay. And this is, this is taking me back a little bit. So one of my biggest struggles with women when I was in my twenties and even most of my twenties is that I was never taught about women mm. you know, from, from a man. So even though I had my dad out, my dad taught me how to get women. So I got my masters at being able to attract women, pull women, but then you get them and you don't necessarily know how to deal with them. Mm. Yeah. You know, so my dad, uh, my dad was a player and, uh, you know, he raised me to be a player, you know, and mm. so, um, and, uh, and by player, uh, my dad, he does a lot of women, um, you know, honorable player, you know, to like, to me, like being a player isn't, I respect that. It's different from being full of, full of it and being yeah. misleading 
And, uh, you know, so that's that's a totally different thing. So he nor I was never there. But uh, I wasn't necessarily taught about how how much grace women may need in in certain situations or just how to how to make how you want them to how you want to make them feel because I don't think he was a master of that either. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? So you, you know sometimes you can't teach anybody something that you don't know. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, so uh so yeah, so me being with her, one thing I noticed is probably she probably used to cramp really bad and used to get these uh horrendous attitudes and um I come from a place a while from in general uh, my upbringing led me to believe that you nip things in the bud just so don't nobody play with you no more. You know what I'm saying? So you you set a standard. As soon as somebody uh, violates you, you nip it. You're gonna let them know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so I brought a little bit of that neighborhood mentality to dating. And so when she may have had a been cramping or something, and she she getting small with me, I'm treating her how she acting versus treating her how much I love her. And, and that's something that took me a long time to learn. Like, like you really can't treat women based upon how they act because they may have an off day or off week. And if you treat them how they're conducting themselves, you're gonna have to answer for it uh, for months later. So, you know, we, we bump heads all the time. But anywho, I had, uh, I wanted to, uh, I was curious as to, okay, you, you're doing all this complaining you know, why are you still here? So I'm like, look, I'm gonna make us start paying half the bills. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, look, you know, you done had it easy this past year, year and a half. I want you to start paying, you know, more bills, half the bills. And she, her response was, she, I might as well get my own place. And I'm 24, 25 at the time. And I'm like, yeah, you probably should. Let's see, she, she was gone within about a month. And Damn. you know what I'm saying? So. And it didn't really impact me at all. Like, it wasn't like no, you know, because I was like, uh, I was, you know, whatever. So I was like ready to kind of be single anyway. And she was getting on my nerves so much, you know. So she got on my nerves like she was like she had been cheated on by every boyfriend that she ever had. I was the first dude that never cheated on her, but she still brought those insecurities to our relationship. And and I was the type of dude that was trying to prove to her that I wasn't cheating on her. You know, so I'm, I'm showing, hey, look, look at my phone. I would never do that, you know? And uh, <laughs> and, and so I was doing that at first. Then I got to a point where, like, you're just going to have to believe, you know, whatever I say or whatnot. So uh, that led to me going out, staying out longer, and just coming in. You come in three, four in the morning. You look like you've been cheating, but ain't, ain't did not one. I've been, I've been at Waffle House. You know, went to the club, then went to Waffle House with the homies. But, you know, and ironically, me changing my approach, she got better once I started, like, I ain't explaining shit to you. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so yeah, we, we ended up breaking up. Um, so um, next relationship, um, I'm living in Philly at the time. And I'm there for work. I'm there for work for about seven months. Um, I go on a trip to Atlanta, and I meet this. I meet this uh, Nigerian woman, and uh, and she, uh, you know, we, we text her the next day after we meet, and she wanted to see me before I go back to Philly. So she was just shocked by me, like as if she had found a dinosaur. You know what I'm saying? Like she was just surprised on like, like I used to take offense when people called me normal or, or a regular guy. And, and now I've realized that that's the biggest compliment um, because generally people associate, sometimes they associate normal with being healthy or just reg like, because so many people just be on some front and flies and just faking uh, type of stuff to the point to where like, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, so, so anywho, uh, me and her date, uh, she introduced me to her culture uh, uh, first time, my first day, the next day, she making jollof rice. You know what I'm saying? She introduced me to fella cootie. And I'm just, all this stuff is a culture shock to me. And I'm introducing her to my culture. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I remember a big thing for her is I showed her snow on the bluff and be like, yeah, this is where I grew up at. You know, basically. So um, anywho, we, we, we date for a couple of years and um, uh, my past caught up with me in regards to how I treated her. Um, 
I've always been dismissive um, to women emotionally, especially when I was in my 20s. Um, but one thing I realized is that um, how I treated women was a reflection of how I treated, I treated myself. You know, I was uh, I was dismissing my own feelings too, just because like it wasn't cool to share how you felt. Um, you know, where I grew up at and, and in my household, like feelings weren't a big thing, you know, especially for men. So, um, so anywho, uh, you know, me and her, like I ended up shunning her down and, and mistreating her to the extent to where she couldn't really, she couldn't put up with me anymore. And she moved on. And that was the biggest wake up call I feel like I ever received because um, that was the woman, I, all the women I've dated that I was the closest to. And so, you know, sometimes when people give you grace, uh, not everybody can learn from grace. Uh, it took for me to have somebody who, who I really wanted to be there to leave me uh, for me to completely change. Uh, Cause that, that those next three or four months of hurt or six months of hurt, a year of hurt, it led to accountability. So what, what was it about her that made you really be able to, to share and be open with her? What, what, what was she doing? Mm, um, for one, man, she, she loved me, you know, so like, uh, you know, a lot of women have loved me, but like, uh, that's the difference between somebody loving you and loving your dirty drug, you know, so, um, we, we were into the same type of music. Um, we, uh, my first time going out the country was with her. Um, just, just a lot of stuff, man. She would just, we were kind of the same person. Um, but she was just, uh, she was more older than me. She was five years older. So at the time I'm 27, she's like 32. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so she was older, more mature. And, um, and she grew up in a family, a more healthier family dynamic. You know, I grew up in a family that can somewhat be a little bit self-preservation based or, you know, uh, and, and that's, yeah. And that's how a lot of African-Americans grew up. You know, it's not just me, it's just, you know, uh, you know, we, we, we're we raised, especially by our mothers, uh, to make sure you don't need nobody for anything. And if you're not careful with that, then that can lead to you being maybe a little, a little bit selfish and not really knowing how to coexist amongst others. And, and um, so when, when I see other women who have, who have their foundation, I can relate to it because uh, my mom raised me to be self-sufficient and I'm having to learn how to coexist, uh, you know, or I have learned, you know, so. I rock to that. So obviously she was five years older. Um, you guys, you know, you felt like she loved you uh, you know, really, really understood you and you guys were very, very similar as well. Um, uh, but obviously, like I said, you, you kind of slipped through your fingers on that particular aspect. Um, I'm intrigued. So is, is, is that the only woman that you date that was older or? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, what do you mean? What do you call a date? I mean, I don't know if sex or anything. Just generally, yeah. generally, it could be, it could be, you know, dating in terms of getting to know someone, like really right. thinking about getting to know someone. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Yeah, yeah. She, she was definitely the only one that was older, and you know, I don't necessarily equate age and maturity. That's fair. You, got, you know, um, so I've, like, for instance, the the young lady from high school, she was two months younger, but she was 15 years older. Mm. You know, so, um, so yeah, so yeah, she's the only one that I dated that was older. And, you know, so, you know, now I'm, now I'm in a place to where like, I mean, I'm 30, 36, you know, so for me, I don't even know me dating too much older than that even makes sense, you know, uh, given that the uh, biological clock and you know, so I have to factor all of that in now, especially if I'm gonna have these 32 kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, okay, so interesting enough, you have a term that you keep saying, which is really interesting. Like you say, she was like, like I said about your first girl, she was 17, 30, about 39. Like, like I, I want to understand that a bit better. Like, when you're saying that people have an older age, mm -hmm. I, I think I know what you're saying, but I want to be very, I want it to be very distinct oh, as to right. what is it you're really trying to illuminate at that point in time as to why you're making that comparison in a sense. Value system. You know, so basically, um, generally, you know, people, people in America, they tend to buy their first homes in their mid thirties. 
you know, so like, um, so people in their thirties tend to have values that people in their teens don't have, you know, people in their forties may have values that people in their thirties don't have. So, uh, you can common, like it's common to run into people in their thirties who want to buy their first home, you know? Um, so like she was, she was, she probably knew about credit and all this, and like nobody's 17 years old talking about credit, saving money, invest. Like she was on that type of time at 17. So just her value system. She had a value system of a grown woman. And, and that's why, like, as soon as she graduated, she started a business. You know, most people, the average person doesn't start a business until their, their early 40s. You know, she was doing that at 19, 20 years old. So she was just, you know, and, and not to big up like she perfect, you know what I'm saying? Because she she, she had some stuff about her that uh, she was crazy, you know, but but at the same time, um, the, the valuable things that I remember about her are the things that impacted me the most, not the negative things. No, no, I'm definitely never understanding that as well for you. I definitely get it. So what do you think was actually happening to you at a time that some of these relationships are slipping through your fingers? Because obviously that, that relationship is when you're now 26, 27, mm -hmm. because she's five years older than you. Um, you know, that's when you're 20s now. Yeah. Um, so I guess obviously I'm, I'm assuming you had a few more meaningful relationships after yeah. that. Um, what 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 do you think is what was the, what would you think was the reason that some of these relationships for your from your end wasn't connecting wasn't hitting it wasn't you weren't able to stay the long course as such. Well, I think I think it's the training. You know, like um, I've said in prior interviews that when you raise a child to be a wife or you raise a child to be a husband, it, it makes it a little bit easier for them to adapt and to you know, knowing their role in society, knowing their, know their role in marriage. I was raised to be successful, but I was not raised to be a husband. Uh, being raised to be a husband means that I'm being raised knowing how to understand women, when to give women grace, when to, uh, knowing a man's role in a relationship, uh, knowing what to expect from women. No one gave me that. You know, even though I had my mother and my father, I had, I had a relatively healthy, uh, family dynamic uh, wasn't perfect, but I had much more than what the average person where I'm from had, you know. So, um, so I have no complaints there because I'm, I'm grateful. Um, but, um, but yeah, it, it had a lot to do with me not. If you're not raised to be this, like, so if you're not, if you're not, if you're not teaching your ten year old kid about credit, then that means they may not learn to twenty seven. You know what I'm saying? So the, the lack of preparation um, to be. Uh, a foundational piece in a woman's life, I didn't have it. So I had to learn how to be a man for women in the dating market. So women on the market had to get me together. Women, I dated women who had high standards. I dated successful women, uh, beautiful women who had high standards. And I, they eventually trained me, um, whether it was successful or a fair relationship, it trained me to what well, I knew how to be, what I needed to be for them. You know, but that took time. It, it, it wasn't like a first relationship. I had to have a consistency of failure and multiple women saying the same thing about me for me to take that and be like, OK, if every woman is saying this, then maybe it's me. And and, and so. Um, so, yeah, I didn't I didn't look at it like because you have nature, right? You know, so like, you know, some men may look at women and be like that crazy. Uh, but in reality, part of the what we think is crazy is part of their nature the same way that part of what they consider us to be crazy is our nature so once you mature i think you get to a point where you realize that like um she's being a woman she's not she's not a b or this or that she's just living in her nature the same way us as us as men do it took time though i mean it probably 10 12 years I mean, that makes sense. I mean, listen, a lot of us go through our journeys, myself included, so I, c I can't um, say anything about that. And sometimes you're right, what we don't, what we don't have, we, we learn along the way. And, and those, those relationships, you know, begging lessons that we, we begin to pick up from and, and, take, and take on board. So what, at what point did it, did it dawn on you and it click on you that it could lose, be the problem? I had to lose, uh, partially is me losing someone who was like, the, the amazing me losing an amazing woman 
was the beginning of that, but also getting feedback from women that I dated afterwards. I kept hearing dismissive, dismissive, dismissive. So on up until about 32, I think I heard that. And then um, I think I started to understand what dismissive meant. And I realized that I was dismissive, not only to women, but to myself. And sometimes we as people, we can only treat you as good as we treat ourselves. So if I'm dismissing myself emotionally, of course I'm going to dismiss you. But when you're dating someone, they don't necessarily know that. They All they feel is how you're treating their feelings. Um, you know, because I'm applying logic um, to their emotions. And, uh, you know, one of my good friends, he told me while I was in a relationship with the Nigerian lady, he said, man, you cannot apply your logic to a woman's emotions. And that stuck to me the same way that it stuck to me when my mom said you can't have you can't make permanent decisions with temporary people. And what he said, it made so much sense because the way women move sometimes is not based upon what makes sense or what's right, but what how they feel still have to be respected. You, you know, and so if you're not showing respect and honor towards how they feel, then you're going to push a lot of women away. Um, but it, it doesn't make it any better when you're not attending to how you feel, too. And like, uh, just to be real, society, uh, I can only, society in the world in general, um, it's not based, it's not built for a man to feel. You know, like, uh, you know, men feel like, you know, like for me, crying or whatever is like, somebody, who this whole ass nigga over here? You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, like, so we don't have safe spaces to, to you just have to be comfortable with, you know, I got to a point to where like, if you judge me for, for my emotions, that they say more about you than it does me, you know, unless I'm acting now, you know. No, I actually totally, totally get that, you know. Um, you know, I think as men as well, we definitely, uh, especially if you, like I said, you're doing dismissive to your own emotions, it's hard, you, you, you can't hold space for other people's emotions because that's not how you view emotions in general, you know what I mean? So I totally get that, I'm, I'm a dismissive, uh, avoidant person too, so. I definitely understand that process and you know when when your emotional needs are neglected um that that side of 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 your life yeah your your behavior will also um will show neglect to the people that are around you the most as well when it comes to their emotional needs because like i said you haven't built up the vocabulary and built up that language you haven't built up that particular stamina uh, to be able to 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 long stand when someone is in that particular space or to even recognize the patterns um, in that particular area, arena as well. Yeah, for sure. So obviously for you then, uh, you finally get that information, you finally get it, you finally understand, um, and it makes a bit more sense now because, you know, I think you kind of answered your own questions. And because I, I, when I asked you to run about whether it affected you, um, you've actually connected the dots. So when I was asking about how it affected you, having parents split, two households, you know, that's where the dismissiveness of the emotion comes in it's like you're taught to be successful and your feelings are not going to matter as a kid because unfortunately it's your parents uh, have to do what they got to do and um it can be very difficult in households in two parent households in two, it's not just i'm sorry household. yes i want to say one thing i think this is really important Go for I, don't, it. I don't feel like i hear enough people say that so just so you you have the african-american experience you have the black experience and uh one thing that i don't think we realize this is black people uh, black people have experienced, black people have been in survival mode since their existence, maybe on earth, but especially in America, uh, mm -hmm. since the 1400s, uh, whatever you want to call it. So with survival mode comes numbness. Yeah. You know, cause you're in survival mode, you have to be numb to survive. Yeah. You know, because like, uh, for instance, if you at war and you're in the war and you see your best friend get killed in the war, if you're not numb to that, then you're gonna be the next to die. Yeah. And that's been the black experience, uh, specifically in a lot of places, but especially in America. Um, right. So mm -hmm. we've established all of these unhealthy ways of coping and and uh, on up until, I guess, quote unquote, the civil rights movement, maybe even still to this day, but we're just now getting to the point to where we can actually reflect and start to worry, like to worry about your emotions is a privilege. Yeah. Like you have yes. to be out of survival mode because, like, when you got to eat, you cannot worry about like you got to just eat. You yeah. Know? Um. So, so as African Americans, 
Um, we we're getting out of survival mode. Now we're starting to focus on things like mental health and more mm -hmm. people are going to therapy. More people are reflecting and just seeing how, where we came from, how's it impacting us today? You know, so like anytime a lot of people look back at their parents and want to look parent, look at their parents, like you did this wrong, this is how you impacted me, but they're not understanding that when you coming out of survival mode, you don't have time to be worried about that. I'm fortunate enough um, to, 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 to be able to reflect and, I'm fortunate I can cry now, you know what I'm saying? But you crying in 1730, you know what I'm saying? You you a weak link, get your ass out, out, the, you know, out the ship or whatever, you know? So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so, uh, so yeah, I just kind of want to add that in because I don't think a lot of black people realize we go back and look at our parents like they underserved us when in reality we were fresh, we were still in survival mode. And so like, I look at, our situations as batons, you know, we're passing our parents out. Our, they did the best they can do to give us um, something that we can take and add to, it, you know, versus them doing us wrong. And I'm my bad for interruption. No, 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 no. I, I, I love the explanation. You know, um, I think it's uh, right on right on the money. Listen, our parents can only give us what they understood and what they what they had. Um, you know, and so unfortunately that, that gap that happens, like you said, in survival versus thrive, it's a very large leap uh, for many, many people, you know. And um, so you summarize it well. I, want, I, want, I don't even need to even go over that um, aspect. So taking that forward, obviously you end up on a show called Ready to Love. Mm -hmm. I want to know why you decided to go Ready to Love because, you know, clearly you, you are, you're finding women and you are dating them and you are in relationships You've learned the lessons that, you know, that will take you to a place where you can actually, uh, you know, make a better partner, husband, et cetera, et cetera. Why are you ready to love? Um, so, um, so for one, I moved to Dallas uh, September 19th of 2022. Um, um, I used the hand jab, which is a dating app that is extremely dope to me used it for business, I've used it for dating, I've used it for everything I can use it for. Um, so I matched with, uh, in January, three months after I moved there, I matched with a young lady from Los Angeles. Um, we we match. I'm like, hey, how you doing? She's like, I'm good, what's your phone number? I'm like, what the hell? You know, um, usually attractive women ain't that easy. You know, so I give her my number, and I'm like, okay, what do I have to lose? My my address that's associated with my phone number, I don't even live that anymore. It's an investment property. Um, so um, come to find out, I get a call from an LA number uh, three or four days later, and it's ready to love casting, who has set up a fake profile to meet me in Dallas. Um, so I got catfish, and this whole time I'm thinking it's fake. I've heard of the show, never watched the show at that time. Uh, first person I call is my mom and my sister because I know they watched it. And uh, I told them, hey, this is what happened, what y'all think, y'all think I should do it. And they, they were in support of it. Um, so, you know, me being new to the city, if, if Ready to Love came to my hometown where I'm from, I wouldn't have been able, I wouldn't have had the flexibility to do it because I would have ended up meeting, half of the women would have been women that I may have already knew already. You know, so me being here in a new city, it made sense. And I felt like it was something that God wanted me to do. I felt like uh, not every day, People match millions of times on the internet. How often um, is it the Oprah network or somebody who you match it with? So for me, um, I don't believe in um, I don't believe in coincidence, and um, that's probably going to hurt me one day. Me thinking everything is coming from God, you know. But uh, as of right now, um, now nah, I was I was I was down for it, and you know I was a little I was afraid to do it, um, but yeah, I, I was down. But uh, <laughs> that's madness. Uh, so you mean they catfished you into the show? Damn. Catfish. Uh, catfish I've heard of this one or two times, to be honest, but not on Ready to Love. I've heard on other TV shows. So you want to yeah. say? They got me, and the girl they catfished me, but it wasn't even my type. You know, I, I just but she was cute. You know, but um, <laughs> but yeah, they uh, they got me, they got me, and uh, so I went through the process. Just I still had the interview. They didn't catfish me and say you're on the show. I still had the interview, do the psychological examination. And, uh, and yeah, but I, I felt like this was something that God wanted me to do. I just didn't know why. So yeah, am I supposed to find my wife on the show? Or would, would this show give me visibility uh, business-wise? 
um, with this show giving me visibility, maybe I'm gonna find my wife on the show, but maybe my wife sees me at home and be like, that's that's the nigga I wanna marry right there. Mm, okay, okay, I get it. So obviously after being catfished, if <laughs> you go on the show, um, you know, you're thinking it could be an opportunity. Listen, why not? You know, God does work in mysterious ways, trust me. Um, so you then obviously get an opportunity to go on the show. Um, you know, you guys are in a very unique situation because you got put in two groups. Um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming you didn't know about the other group uh, until a little bit later on in the process. Um, so let's talk about your initial entry when you finally get there um, and you finally get into the process. Talk to me about your first impressions of being in the process, being involved in the show. Um, what's your thoughts? What was your thoughts initially? Um, you mean like the day of the first mixer or just walking yeah, in? Yeah, like you when you first arrive on the scene and you guys get to first meet the ladies. Push us, so that would have been easy to say that. You know, you first get to meet the ladies, first get to mingle, first get to, uh, you know, interact with your cohorts at that point. What's your first thoughts? Uh, first thoughts, I met the, you know, for me, I was open to whatever the show had to provide for me. Uh, I didn't know whether it was going to be love, uh, lifelong friendships. You know, I'm here in Dallas. I'm, you know, I'm quote unquote almost by myself, but not really. Um, so I've met, uh, so I meet, I meet the guys first. We all sit in the car, meet DeMonte, meet Will, William, and Lamar. And one of my concerns when I first, before I met the guys, like, when I hope these dudes ain't no, no corny, trying to compete, you know, just, I hope they did some cool brothers, you know, because uh, I don't want it, I don't want it to be any contention between me and the brothers. So I was hoping that we could have a friendly competition, quote unquote, to, to get to know the women. So meet them first. Uh, and I'm like, oh, I meet the dudes, and I'm like, oh, these are some niggas, you know. Um, you know, and, and they was, uh, you know, just the, the interactions I had with them prior to walking into it, it, it made me feel more comfortable because they weren't like, no, they weren't no square dudes. Like, uh, Will Street, uh, LeRon, just, I don't know what he is, but he himself, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, he, or whatever. So, but then William, you know, he, he said he a comedian. I didn't think he was funny when I first met him, you know. Um, and DeMonte, he is just a smooth dude. He came with like a, I ain't gonna say a man purse, but like a bag with a cologne and toothpicks and, and gentleman's jack. I'm like, this nigga is, you know, he, he, you know, whatever. So I'm like, he got everything prepared. You know, we all take the shots. But we meet the women or whatever. And uh, of course, in that first group of women, um, you know, the women, I felt like all the women were attractive. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm nervous, but at the same time, you know, just with what I do for a living, like I curate, I curate art shows, been doing that for eight years. And so I know how to move, work a room. I know how to, I know how to have a conversation. Like, you know, still, still to this day, like people feel more comfortable approaching women on social media. I'm an in-person person. And so I, I know how to, you know, just, just shoot the shit or whatever. And, uh, and so um, physical attractiveness, of course, you know, Mika, Mika, Mika and the Brown or the Doodoo Brown, like she, she was a, uh, you know, she, she stood out. Um, and the reputation wise though, I heard, I heard a lot about Alexis before I even got to talk to her at, at the end of the night. So once I talked to her at the end of the night, I could tell why everyone uh, was feeling her. Um, you know, you know, me and Mika had a, had a great conversation. Uh, ironically, when first meeting Mika, I didn't ask her um, about anything related to kids for some reason. I, I don't remember doing it and she could correct me if I'm wrong. But I don't, and so for me, in my mind, I'm like, okay, she got a couple of kids, that's cool, whatever. But I didn't know that she didn't want to have any in, in, in that specific moment. I, I ended up hearing later or whatnot. But, uh, but yeah, I felt like all the women was cool, and uh, I was just excited to meet the next group, though. Okay. So your your initial first interest, would you agree that was uh, your initial first eye test was Mika? Oh. No. I test? Yeah, like you, you know. <laughs> oh. yeah, sorry. <laughs> As in, like, you, you know, who first caught your eye? That's probably the actual how to say it. Like, who first caught your eye? You know what I mean? Who was the first? Like, I like, mm. So, I had already knew Mika was going to be on the show before I got on the show. 
Okay. Huh? So, so, and this is. Uh, oh, you really, you guys know know each other already, or? No, I don't know nobody. I just moved. Here. I don't know nobody but me, my people I work with, people I do business with. So I don't know nobody. But so, so when we go, we do our initial interviews or whatever to be on the show, and there's a makeup lady. You mm. know, that's the person like. That's why people faces when they do interviews be looking weird and shit because, like, they put makeup on them. You know what I'm saying? So the makeup girl is like, she doing my makeup and I'm asking, I'm so curious to know about the women. I'm like, how do women look? She's like, they all beautiful. I'm like, how beautiful? You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm trying to figure out like, are they fine? Like, what do I need to prepare myself for? You know what I'm saying? So, so anywho, me and the girl end up following each other on Instagram. And the makeup Does artist- makeup go fine? Huh? Was the makeup artist fine? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, she was straight. Continue. She's an attractive woman. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't gonna say it, but yeah, she was very attractive. So I find out that uh, she gave up the Instagram so easy. I'm like, okay, you done met the girls already. Ain't no way in the hell that you ain't been giving your Instagram up easy all day. So what I do is I go follow. We follow each other. I go look and see what she just followed on Instagram. Then I see maybe within the last couple of days, I see three or four women. Cause I'm just that thirsty to know who am I about to meet on this show. I understand so I you're doing due diligence. Yeah, I found Rashina. I found who that? Was it Patricia? I found Patricia. I found Koshia. I found and I found Mika. And so I'd already I, I didn't know for a fact. But I knew that it was a, at least a 33% chance that these are the ladies that I was going to meet. So I get there and I only see Mika and Koshia because she followed Koshia too. So I did my investigative research. Just I was all the men was extremely thirsty as to who in the hell are we about to get introduced to. And I was the only one that did my investigative research and found uh, found Mika. So you know I knew Mika was going to be on the show. Uh, I had a good feeling that she was. And so you know, so yeah, when you know, when I met, her, I was like, okay, that's 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 such a search. It's an ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of investigative yeah. search. It's also important to do background background checks. But I do have to ask you a question. Since you investigated through the Instagram, which means you've got investigative powers, did you not investigate the show? Well, the only reason I did, and I'm gonna be real with you, I looked at one clip on YouTube, and there was a clip with. Uh, she was a lady from the Miami season. I can't think of her name now. But she was a pretty woman, but she was mean as hell. Um, Miami? Yeah, Miami. Dawson? Dawson. She was pretty, though. Kayla? She was in the... Um, I, I've seen a, other clips. She's been... I've seen on Chris Lexo, too. She was Morgan. In my, oh, was it Morgan? Morgan, yeah. She was mean. Morgan's fine. I can't lie to you. Morgan's pretty. But she was mean to a dude on the date. I was like, oh, hell. And, like, I knew that if I watched the show that I was going to this, it was gonna scare me from, I was already afraid to do the show. And so I knew that if I watched the show, I wouldn't want to do the show. So I figured that it was best for me to walk into the show blindly because I knew that, I felt like this is something that God wanted me to do. And as random as the opportunity was, I'm like, I'd rather trust God than me watch the show, get psyched out and pull a Glenn. You, you know what I'm saying? And shout out to Glenn, you know, but, I was afraid to. It, it, it was. I, I knew that if I watched the show, you know, to be honest with you, I think it's best that you do not watch. Watching the show does not prepare you for the show at all. Uh, actually, I think watching the show makes you more fake on the show. And 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 I don't know if people can see how I moved versus how some people move on the show. But like people came to the show with a, a game plan, trying to make it to the end, trying to do this, and that's because they watched prior seasons. It. If you watch the show, it turns into a game. For you. I came like, look, if I like you, I like you. I don't, I don't. God got me. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I would suggest anyone who's doing this show, if you want to show up as your genuine self, do not watch it. Because getting caught up and making it to the end, I think, will make you look like a fool versus genuinely being yourself. I don't suggest anybody watch the show. Just be yourself, and you'll get what comes to you. Whatever God has for you, you'll get it by being yourself. And watching the show, I think, like I was going to the lounge, like what's the lounge? I was like, I was like a a, a Chinese dude from China in New York in Times Square with a spinning hat on. I'm just like, you know, nah, I, nah, I don't regret it at all. I, I wouldn't suggest watching. It.
I'm not mad at it. I, I hear that. I'm not mad at it. I get what you're saying. Okay. So, obviously then, uh, wait, did we, did we finish the, who, who, who was it? So you were finishing the story about your background shit, but who was the first one that was the one that caught your eye? Who's the one that you know the eye was drawn to first and foremost? I just, you know. You know, the eye? It was me. It was it's me. the eye. Yeah, I, it's I, the I, eye. I ain't gonna fuck with it. Like, yeah, your amiga, uh, yeah, it was me. It was me. Why, why are you saying that so faintly? Huh? Not fakely, but it's just like I'm like this. Uh, of course, Lee. Of course, it was Mika. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. Mika, like Mika, Mika attracted. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, mm. you know, um, yeah, she she attracted like mother. Is that your usual type? No. Physique wise, because I know that was your mentor. Is your big wise, fan, but I'm saying physique wise. Or do you normally like him a bit more sporty, athletic? You like him a bit bigger? I, I like I like thick I like thick women, but I am I am appreciating more. I'm getting to a point as long as that booty jig, I'm good. Listen, bro, I'm with you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, you. like you can't, I can't make that. I can't be missing out on on brilliant souls just because they ain't got blah 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 blah. You know what I'm, I'm saying? Like, I'm at a point now where I'm like, long as that mug do a little something, you know. Little jiggle, jiggle. Yeah, we're good. I'm with you on that, brother. Yeah. You you spoke in true words and wisdom yeah. there. I, I um, can't have no nothing too stiff back there. Flat. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, like this. I have a little son. We, we need some potatoes, some steak potatoes, some, some jollof, some some palava. <laughs> I do hear that. I hear that definitely. All right. So then obviously, I know you're a, a person. Um, you know, I, I know you're a person. Obviously, that connects mentally. So, who then did you get to have that mental connection with? Because it was from your before you get to introduce the rest of the second ground of casts. Who out of the ladies do you feel like you know you were mentally be able, able to connect with on that level? Off the rip, it was Alexa. You know, like I thought so. We didn't talk the whole day, but we had a, a conversation at the end of the night, and and uh, in our conversation, like you know, I could tell that she was, uh, I could tell she was cool. You know, I, I could tell she was like a super cool person, uh, and a very very comforting person. Yeah, off the rip. I mean, Alexis personality wise, she has an elite personality. So I, I give it mm. a. And this is me. Like I'm, I'm world. I'm worldwide. Uh, this that this that. She has an elite personality. Mm. I like that. I can't lie, to you. And I understand that because I think just watching her on the show, I can actually see why people will get on with her. A very cool. It seems very very cool. Very bubbly but you know so like you, you it's almost as if you can talk basketball but also talk life you know what i mean same time and you know as men we love that balance and stuff and one thing about lex though and, 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 and not even to brag on Lex, one thing that she's really good at she has elite level discernment and mm. discernment doesn't always equate to decision making that's fair you know? now but for our scope in the scene mm. you know me i scope the scene without even looking at the scene you know, like so, I'm boom, boom, boom. You type, you just type. You, I, I'm a very trusting person. I'm a trusting person because I can afford to be trusting because I have discernment. When you don't have discernment, you don't trust nobody. Mm. Um, Alexis, she has elite level discernment, so she can go through the room and be like, he this, he this, he this, he this, he this, and be. I don't know if you remember or not, but you know, and, and shout out to the brother LeBron. Um, she she said in the first episode, well, I don't know, there's something about LaRon. <laughs> and they showed that. Like that was one of the that when I tell you she she saw through me. And, and not that she had to, because I was not like I was showing up like I wasn't myself, but she said things about me as I got to know her that I was like, damn. Like she has a lead level. Of, she don't even know it. Like I, I told her that she's like, oh really? You know what the hell? Yeah, you, she has a lead level design. She sees the way everybody. I hear that. No, I get it, and I, I love the fact you made a distinction that just because you have a discernment doesn't mean that you're able to execute the will of nope. what your discernment is seeing. Nope. Sometimes you, even though you have the discernment, the will needs to also catch up with the the the, the mind that's perceiving what you're seeing. Exactly. You know what I mean, so she's she's executed discernment, that decision making. 
<laughs> I don't know about it. Know about and that's true, because no matter how you feel, the heart feels how the heart feels. And sometimes we make decisions based on the heart. So you're absolutely right. I, I definitely totally understand that as well. And that's a big shout out to, to Lexus too. Um, when it comes to the sermon paper, I definitely, um, I love that point as well. I think it's a great point to, to make, especially for us as men, being able to appreciate women as well in that space and understand that. From a, from a mental perspective too. So obviously you, yourself and Alexis were the ones that kind of mentally that was kind of clicking. Um, you know, uh, you know, you get introduced to the, to the second cohort um, as well, you know, and tell me a little bit about that. When you guys finally get to meet up and, you know, with the other second cohort, what's that like, you know, and who, who who's attracting your eye at that point then? Uh, uh, Vanessa off the roof, you know, so. So one thing about the show, is that, you know, I, I was a little more connected than what they actually shown um, because I, I missed a lot of the show. And I had to, I had to leave the show. I missed a couple of episodes, but I had to actually I had to leave. And so um, I had to go back home and do this, do that or whatever. But um, they decided to phase me out of the show uh, because it, it made a more it made more sense for them to phase me out of the show and eliminate me versus me showing me being connected to this person and that person and that person. Then it, it would have been harder to justify me being uh, my presence on the show. But anywho, um, Vanessa, uh, Vanessa, um, I walk in the room, I hit my cyclops, and uh, I see Vanessa to the right. She's she's sitting by Zoe. And I immediately walked towards her. She was. Uh, she she called my eye off the rip, and she the woman that I wanted to, I wanted to sit down next to and feel some of my body heat. <laughs> Not you saying body heat? Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So, uh, so the Vanessa connection uh, oh. that was popping. Anyone else from the second cohort that was kind of that kind of oh. caught you? I thought Lay Lynn was dope. I thought Lay Lynn was dope. Um, yeah, that was good, but she left early. Um, they didn't show up, but me and Rashina had went out on a date after, immediately after the brunch. Me and Rashina went out on a date, and we didn't get to talk at the brunch, but after talking to Rashina, like, uh, I thought the world of Rashina, uh, so much to the point to where throughout the whole process, I bigged up Rashina the whole time. like. I was I was in the lounge just talking about how of an amazing example of a black woman that I feel like Rashina is. Like I big her up the whole the whole way through, you know. And uh, you know, they didn't they didn't show that um because it wasn't a part of the storyline. Why were you bigging up Rashina? Um just because I felt I you know how I say discernment wise, I felt like she's trustworthy. Um I could feel pretty quickly. Um, that she's a solid, that she's solid, she's trustworthy. And I could tell that like, she has honor, um, you know, like um, Rashina, like Rashina solid, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, and I knew that off the rip, after t- me and her had long conversations on the phone uh, to the point of where either one of us is falling asleep or whatever. I knew that she was a solid woman. And after immediately meeting Rashina, I knew that like, I want her to be in my life. Um, I just didn't, I didn't necessarily always see it as on, on a romantic capacity. Um, but I was like, yeah, I want you to do something. You know what I'm saying? I thought, I thought she was that dope of a woman. Uh, she made a great impression on me and there's nothing that she's done since then to, to make me sway. Uh, she's super solid. I get it. Some people are, some people are destiny helpers. Some people are, you know, good friends that we, we have in our lives and they're not necessarily a relationship in that respect, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I get that. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, so bypassing that, you've obviously mentioned about Vanessa, you've talked a little bit about Rashina, um, obviously you had your connection with Mika as well. Okay, so talk to us about this journey with Mika because it, I don't know if this story was for the, the show, of the, because at the beginning I thought, I, I didn't think it was going to go any further than this. I knew that there was attraction there, but I didn't think it was going to go any further because of the fact that you wanted kids, it sounded like she didn't want kids, and then it sounded like it sounded like the player ways came through, and you you managed to to shift her position. But I want to know from your perspective, what was that journey like with Mika um, for you for yourself actually? Um, so for me, I mean, we had that initial conversation. Um, 
to where like she was super cool. Um, good conversation, I felt like, you know what I'm saying? Um, once I found out about the No Kids thing, I don't remember who told me, I really don't. I was like, shit, that's part of the reason I want to get married. Like, I don't, you know, like this, just keeping it all the way funky with you. Like, of course I want a woman I can spend eternity with my best friend, all this, woo, woo, woo. but I, I want a family which, that includes kids. So that kind of took her out of that space but they kept putting me on dates with her, even though that that uh, that that you know, irregardless of how I felt about that, you know. So you know, I was pretty transparent about I want kids, she not willing to have kids. But they kept putting us on dates, even though I feel like they didn't have nobody else to pair her with at the time, you know. So I think Mika, so she keeps it so real sometimes to the point to where, like, I know Mika wanted to finish the show out. But at the same time, uh, she wasn't fake at all. Like she wasn't about to fake like she act like she liked somebody who she didn't like. You know what I'm saying? So when she said any positive things about me, I feel like she genuinely meant it. But she wasn't about to just say I like this person just to be on the show. She she was uh she stuck to her guns, and I feel like for the most part, uh, she kept it real. And um, but me and her didn't. Um, I felt like we went on so many dates to the point where I was like, damn, maybe. She, should I just did have nine kids? You, you know what I'm saying? I was like, you know, I started to be like, okay, because I started the more and more they put me around, I'm like, damn, like y'all, y'all gonna make me switch my position. You know what I'm saying? Like, so or whatever. So, cause she she was cool. Like she's uh, and and um, I felt like uh, yeah, they they kept production kind of fostered that because they didn't have anyone else to put her with. I feel like initially. Uh, just because she kept it real about, I'm not feeling this person, not feeling this person. And so I was like the last person left between me and Chaz. And Chaz was already booked. He was booked and busy. So we couldn't add her to Chaz. So they they kind of tried to make me and her a thing. Um, you know, even though in real life, we I think there was respect there, but I don't think neither one of us looked at each other like we about to get married or, you know what I'm saying? So they, production fostered that. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm with it. So there was a bit of a shift and a, and a, and a movement. Yeah. Um, and it had nothing to do with her. Yeah, so I'm like, you dope, but like, I'm, I'm looking for some, you know, I want some babies. Mm -hmm. I want a wife too. Wife first, then baby. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, uh, you know, the, the part obviously for you, obviously on the, on the show, once you found out she wasn't shifting, so I'm sure you'd have found that quite early. How long before you guys actually got to kind of, I guess, stop dating? I know, I know they put you on dates as well, so you ain't got a choice in that some respect. But mm -hmm. at what point did you, for your for your mind, did you go, yeah, I'm out then? Well, I was still willing to ex explore the process. Mm -hmm. I mean, but like in real life, like in my mind, my motivation wasn't high. Um, you know what I'm saying? You know, because like for me, I've never, I've never, been in a relationship with a woman who had children, uh, let alone, you know, because technically she only has one child because one of her, she, her, her daughters is a grown woman, just about. And so like, uh, but but it was going to be, okay, I have to take care of a young man or assist with it. Not that she's asking for anybody to take care of anything. Um, but I was like, then I was going to have to uh, not have no kids. And, and, you know, I mean, immediately, I guess I, I knew that, that the longevity wasn't there. But with me, in reality, I'm not just a longevity person. And that's that's probably my downside to, to a certain extent because uh, I'm not an all enough person. Like if I meet somebody and, and, and she's not, I can't see myself with her for 50 years, I still would, I'll appreciate the three months we had. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't look at her like she was disposable just because I didn't see myself marrying her. Like shit, I like to go out, I like to travel, we can go out the country, we can go kick it, we can go, you know, so it, it ain't, it's, I'm not an all or nothing person in real life. Um, I approached this experience more all or nothing just because I'm like, this is specifically a show to find a wife. So, um, but in reality, in real life, I would have been entertaining um, more than, than I was in the show because I took this, I took this process pretty seriously. And and that's why I like when women say I wouldn't apply pressure, it's just because I really didn't have any, any pressure to apply. You know, I didn't want to be disingenuous. You know, because I'm I'm thinking pressure is like for the long haul, not just for us to kick it for six months. Okay. 
open up. I get it. I get, I get that. Um, so obviously then that so that that situation uh, comes to an end then. But then obviously we see your, your journey continue with Vanessa. Talk to us about this. Oh wait, wait. Before I talk about Vanessa, was there anyone else that you were connecting with? I know you said about Rashida, but anyone else that you dated that you thought there could have been something more? No, just uh, for the most part, I would say, well, I could stab them anything. It was Vanessa and Alexis. Okay. So obviously the, the Lexus connection, where did that go to? And because we didn't get to see, we saw a little bit, but we didn't see we didn't get to see much. I mean, we saw you had a conversation kind of earlier on, and then right. they kind of focused a bit more on her other journeys. What what where did that relationship go to? Where did that connection go to? So to like right now on the show, both. Oh, but shit on the show, uh, Vanessa, not Vanessa, but. Alexis was the Chaz. She was the female Chaz. Um, not, they're not the same exact exact person, but Alexis by far was the most liked woman on the show. Like, in, like by far, like I don't even know who second. Second may be, second may be Maya. And may, there's probably two or three people that like Maya, but like as far as Alexis, Alexis probably had six, seven niggas, you know what I'm saying? You know, so, uh, so she was the most liked woman on the show. So they had to, the same way they had to split up Chaz this time, they had to split up Alexis time. So it didn't never, it didn't really look like she had any strong connections with anybody, with the exception of uh, uh, Sweet uh, Willie, uh, my, my boy Willie. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, but yeah, I mean, she, on the show, I think to be real with you, after Will got eliminated, and, and, and that's one thing I respect about Will. Like me and him, we both like Alexis, and we had conversations online like she made the best man win, and he believed in himself. And I believe in myself. I'm like, you know, it, 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 and neither one of us really cared. Because to be real with you, I could, I could tell when we'll do his thing outside of the process. Yeah, and you could kind of tell who do their thing outside of the process by how attached and how how they treat the women on the process. Mm. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you can tell who really, who really doing Putting it. Working. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So he he kept it whatever. And uh, but yeah, so with her. Uh, we still we still have a good relationship I have a lot of respect there but um it, it wasn't any manifestation into an actual relationship um but but um i think it's a deep a deep respect uh she probably has more respect for me than she does for whoever else but um but yeah we we, we locked in we hung out outside of the show we you know so we i think we have a, a really good relationship mm. i feel like if i take her out she gonna Put a hair and makeup on, make sure she get look nice for you know. Yeah. So are you, are you, are you pursuing that relationship? Pursuing no. If so why not? Why not? Well, I'm back to the world now, and so, and and the the, the thing about me getting put off the show is like I limited the show for the show, but now now we're inviting. Once I left the show, I was like, okay, now I'm back open to the world. Mm. And not just Dallas, but but the world, you know. So now, yeah. So it's, yeah, we, we not, you know. Now, like in, on the show, it's only ten women. So I was fair, and I didn't really pursue women outside of me being on the show. Like I didn't even have time to. So I was like, hey, even the time it, there were times I tried to date after while being on the show. I it, it never worked out because they had you standing so what two in the morning. I'm like, look, I'm sorry. I'm on the TV show. Let me go and tell you. But like, once I was finished with the show, now the world is that the world is my my option now. I get it. I get it. You know what I mean? You you got some solid some some solid attention up in the in in the in the in the DMs and the hinges. You know what I'm saying? DMs yeah, hinges and you know I, I was in your city a couple months ago. I hear. Listen, oh, they, they love a good American. They do. They really they be talking about all kind of stuff about y'all, but 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 they all women, did. yeah, they do. They do. I know it's the exact same. It's a reverse. They just wherever yeah. you go, the opposite. They 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 they, they do the talking. So I, do. I'm not even mad at it. I hear it. Um. So okay. So Alexis Alexis wasn't one. Uh. But then obviously Vanessa. I want to know how. Okay. I get. I get. You know. I want to know how this this connection began to form and how it began to take place because obviously you know I think we were all a little bit surprised by it, but. Um, you know, I would love to get your perspective in terms of how that the relation, how that relationship formed, and how you, where it got to. Because yeah. obviously, in the end, unfortunately, Chaz was the one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What well, the end of the show? Yeah. 
Right, right. So as far as <laughs> Vanessa, uh, the brunch, uh, we met at the brunch. And so uh, had the initial meeting, hey, how you doing? They sit us outside, they're filming this, but I felt like it was better uh, for the story not to show this, but sitting outside, you know, hey, how are you? What do you do? Hey, you got kids? Hey, whatever, whatever. And um, so uh, uh, what, what hit me in my first conversation with Vanessa is that, you know, I, I lived in Mexico, uh, you know, for a while during the pandemic. And, you know, I lived in Playa del Carmen, you know, so I had, had a condo on the beach in Playa del Carmen. and um, I told her that, hey, I used to live here, you know. And she's like, yeah, I just went there not so long ago. She showed me a picture of her being in Playa del Carmen and my condo was in the background. And I'm like, then again, I'm like, I don't believe in coincidence. So I'm like, what are the chances of all the places? You know, Playa del Carmen is a city of 400 to 500,000 people. What, what are the chances you take a picture in my condo specifically is in the background? So I'm like, boom, coincidence, no coincidence. So anywho, um, so that's kind of where it started. And then we kept in contact. Uh, I think we saw each other at the brunch and I had missed a couple of episodes. I finally got back to Dallas and we had the brunch episode. That's like episode four or five. Uh, so I, I'm rocking with Vanessa, you know, I still like her. Like I'm physically wise, she the most, she, I'm, I'm most attracted to her. And then I felt like she was the most like, who was more like me than, than a lot of the women uh, when it came to a lot of stuff. Um, so uh, we have a conversation or whatever and uh, good conversation that Chaz walk up and I can kind of tell that at that point she liked Chaz more than me. And I'm like, okay, you know, um, you know, at this point, like I've been around Chaz enough to know that like, he ain't finna end up with none of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's episode four. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm still not no hater. So I'm not going to go behind his back and say nothing to the women. I'm not going to say nothing about none of the dudes to the women that's going to diminish whatever value that they have in his mind. That's not, how, that's not how I move. That's not how my family move. You know, I'm not going to try to down a man so I can come up. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh, she, I, I saw she liked Chaz or whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I'm like, at this point, I'm like, okay, y'all can have all these women. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna just enjoy it and and um and just uh if something happened to happen, if not, I'm gonna just get the women at home when the TV, when the show come out. You know, so um we played that game Truth and Sexy later on that night. And uh Rashina had asked me, they didn't show it. It was one of the few clips from the game that they left out um because they didn't want to show a connection between me and Vanessa. That that wasn't what was best for TV, but they uh, Rashina asked me, who do I think was the sexiest woman on the show? And um, I said, Vanessa, you know, because that's why I genuinely, it was hard for me to say that to Rashina, because I feel like me and Rashina had, it, it wasn't a lot, but it was something, you know what I'm saying, at that time. So when I said Vanessa's name, it was hard for me to say that to Rashina, but I was keeping it real, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I looked at Vanessa, and Vanessa, like, she turned into a, a hot Hershey's, she melted, you know what I'm saying, like, or whatever. So, uh, so when I, we moved on, uh, we kept in contact, and um, and then uh, I brought her on my friend date, and uh, she's already mentioned it, so I felt comfortable with saying it. So I brought her on my friend date, and uh, she did hit me up like, "Hey, do you want to link up outside the process?" And I'm like, "I'm like, hey, let's see how this day go." I'm like, "Yeah, of course," and I was like, "Wink, uh, wink, if you want to link up later." And that's kind of like, I don't know if y'all remember this moment, but probably not, because it wasn't a big deal, but we kept playing a little wink game, you know, during during our day when she met my homie. And we ended up linking up uh, after the show. We went out, smoked hoop, and had drinks, then we came back We came back here, came back to my place. And we'll meet her and uh, two, at least two of her friends. So I'm just entertaining them, having a good time. And um, and uh, that was just like, you know, the beginning of, uh, of us just having a solid foundation. You know, so we, uh, we kept in contact, of course, at the time. She uh, she did like Chaz more, um, but I really couldn't knock her for that because I like Alexis more than I like her. Wow, wow, I was on the show, you know what I'm saying? Like so, so like I couldn't I couldn't knock her for that because Ch Ch Chaz is a, a nice guy. I just want to make it clear. So what what, what did Vanessa say? She said you said wink for the, for the lake. Oh, yeah. Is that what it, yeah, she, is that what was said? 
yeah, basically like link, like uh, if you want to link up after this. And so uh, we linked up and man, she they, they stayed over here probably about four, four, five in the morning. And we just had a good time, some good clean time. You know, let me, good clean church. Yeah. Mm. Okay. okay. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. So just, you know, good clean fun. It wasn't like it was anything. Man. Yeah, it was well, no, good no. clean fun, but outside of process. I get it. Okay, so um, obviously, uh, so obviously you, you saw obviously the connection between uh, Chaz and and Vanessa as well, and obviously in the end you 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 got um, um, kind of you got voted off at a point too. But I mean, when you were when you were seeing the connection, what was your thoughts though? I just I, I'm I'm asking because obviously because that was. I mean, competition might be a very strong word, but you are competing in some sense. So what was your thought process? Because obviously, I know you're a strong person. You back yourself, you back your game, you back what you bring to the table. Um, but what was your thought process to kind of seeing that? In reality, while on the show, I was like, y'all can have all of these ladies. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because I could tell, to be real with you, I could tell to some of the fellas that like the ladies more than I like them. I like them. Like, I'm not a person who like some it's very rare that I meet a woman and within a couple of weeks I'm just like, oh, I got a, I got a cuff, I got a wife. You know what I'm saying? Like some of the fellas, like one thing, and I have to give the fellas their props. Um, the men genuinely did show up to be in love. They were not there playing around. Like it some of it may look like games, but uh from William was really into Maya, like into it, into it. Laurent really into Maya, really like Koshia. Chaz was kind of, he was just into the ladies in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he liked all the ladies. I genuinely like, like the dudes were really into the ladies, you know what I'm saying? So like, uh, and and with me, I want them type of dudes that I live in abundance, you know? So for me, I want them type of dudes that were like, oh, okay. You know, the only way I'll step in is if I feel like you just got ill intent, you know what I'm saying? But like when I saw someone like Will that was in the, into Maya, I was like, bro, go do your, do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, because like for me, I, I have an abundance mindset um, based upon what I feel like is available to me outside of this process. So it was no need for me to be trying to block nobody else's blessings because I, I really wanted to see the man win. Um, so for me, I bagged out the way more. So uh, because like, and if I would have met a woman during the process to where if I felt like on the process, I felt like this woman is one of one she's way better than any other options that I have access to already, then I probably would have been a little more assertive. Uh, but for the fact that I felt like that was some of the other guys' case versus mine, um, it, it, it helped me be root for people and just get uh, nicely eliminated. Mm. So you're saying that you was more calm and more chill in your demeanor because you know you had an abundance, so therefore you didn't fret about the situation in the show. Well, not not only an abundance, but like, I think the purpose of coming on this show is to find something that you may not have access to. You know, like you don't come to this show and end up with somebody unless that person is better for you than what's already available to you. And and, and, and that's like, to me, that's what makes sense. Um, you know, like, um, so I thought all the women were amazing. Um, I have two connections. Uh, uh, one lady who I end up end up being like, oh shit, okay, we got something here. Uh, but like at the time, while I was on the show, while I was on the show, I was like, I was like, okay, these are great women, you know what I'm saying? But like, you got it. Mm. I get you. No, I, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm reading between the lines. Yeah. Um, so obviously, I, I want to know because obviously, uh, the 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 boys and the girls this season have been a mess. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of like the divides and, uh, um, you know, the separations that have happened as well. Um, obviously, you know, for the for the gentleman, you know, there's been there's been talk of obviously mutiny amongst the boys, you know, in terms of the way certain people have operated and, and mm -hmm. behaved. You said, obviously, like you said, Laurent was into Maya. Well, I thought Will was into Alexis. I didn't know he was into Maya. We didn't get to see that connection. No, um, William. William. Oh, William. Sorry, William, not Will. I apologize. William is into Maya. Um, why was mine not considered for you actually? Before I do that, before I talk about the boys, um, probably because of what I, what I already have access to. 
and just, just keep it fucking with you. I, I thought she was dope. Um, I think she's really pretty. I think she's smart. And uh, she reminded me of my little sister, you know, like, um, and um, and she was, um, I feel like she was definitely worthy of uh, the pursuit that she got from from the fellas. And uh, I love the way she carried herself, but based upon what's already available to me, then it, 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 it made more sense for me to step back and let them do their thing. I get that. I'm with it. Um, so obviously, the 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 them, the them um, <laughs> obviously, uh, there was some mutiny because group chats, all that kind of madness as well. Um, were you involved in the in the in the coots? Yeah, 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 yeah. You saw it. <laughs> what the heck happened with the coots? Okay. Because Will Will got Will got slated for it. William got slated for it. Um, Alexis got done a little bit dirty too, but. We've obviously since I've interviewed Will, he's come out. He's said mm -hmm. he's shown me the receipts. I've seen the receipts himself. Yeah. It shows that it, that it wasn't him who was doing the coots. But what was your particular perspective? Because obviously, when you get dragged into something, and you might not necessarily be named, but you can be dragged into things. Yeah. How did you see that situation? You know, so my involvement, uh, so the group chat was initially started um, really just as like a camaraderie type situation. Um, and uh, well, me, I'm very careful about what I say behind people's backs. Um, you know, not because I don't trust people, just because like when I'm saying anything behind somebody's back that I wouldn't say to their face, and I feel fake. Uh, you know, I feel fake when I do it or if I do it. Like, you know, uh, I don't even like talking to my sister about my mama. You, you know, so it's just, um, I don't move like that. So anyone who saw that group chat, you know, I, for the most part, I was in there bigging people up. Uh, the, the group chat was never really created. Um, as a conspiracy, as it was reported, um, but um, but you know there were some conversations within a group chat, of course, that but people had negative things or say who they did, what didn't like. People say who they didn't like, what they didn't like. Hey, what y'all about to do? There was a whole conversation about everything, and uh, I think when LeBron brought it to everyone's attention, he minimized the whole group chat to who he who people said they didn't like or they didn't like, and he used that. As a uh, as a technique or two to sway Maya, and it worked brilliantly. Um, so much to the point where I couldn't even be mad at him because I didn't think Maya wanted to be where she was at anyway. So it gave Maya an excuse to to go to Laurent because I think I think that I think that Laurent could have said, "Man, I seen William steal a pack of nail ladies from the store," and she would have been like, "You still? Uh uh." And she would have went. Now I don't think she was really feeling William like that. And and she's not wrong for going, uh, you know, because I think in reality she didn't vote William off the show, but when she took William from her top and put Leron at her top, that left William with nobody else, so that's why he went home. Damn, you know, you know what I'm saying? But um, I think I don't think that William and Maya made a lot of sense, even though that he's a good guy and she's a good girl. Um, but Leron and Maya made made more sense at the time for her and. For others, because they may live two more similar lifestyles, and neither one of them have mm -hmm. kids, and, and she's not wrong for wanting to date LeBron at that time over over William. So, um, yeah. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can talk about this assessment, but obviously, as an audience, we, from our perspective, saw mm -hmm. that. I don't know if you can add some light to this in terms of perspective that it didn't look like. Maya was feeling the run like that. Do you know what I mean? From, that's why, as an audience, we were screaming at. If you've been on our lives, you would have seen that we've been talking about it for the past thingy. But maybe we are getting it wrong, and maybe we don't have a very good perspective. You know what I mean? Um. Well, I don't know Maya like that. I want to preface this. Um, I've, I've just been around her, but I don't know her on a personal level. But I am perceptive. Um, I'm mm. perceptive enough to know that, like, she likes to be pursued. And okay. If a man applies enough pressure to Maya, some dudes who don't deserve Maya, and not to say he don't, let me let me rephrase that. Not to say that okay. Ron doesn't okay. deserve Maya, but if a dude applies enough pressure to Maya, because she likes to be pursued, pursued, that may a lot of women they get so caught up in pursuit to the point where they end up with niggas they weren't supposed to be with. Yeah, the a lot the of women. Are so, so let's just say if a dude like me come around. I may be a, a valuable a, a valuable option for someone, but there may be another dude who may be half of a nigga. You know what I'm saying? And if he applying more pressure, 
and that woman feel like that's the type of pressure I need, that he may get the girl when I'm just like, all right. You know what I'm saying? So he uh, LaRon applied some real pressure. And it wasn't about mm-hmm. him being the best person for her in the world, but she wants she wants to be pursued. And when you get more caught up in that than the quality of the man, you may sometimes end up with somebody you're not supposed to be with. I get it. Yeah, so I she may not. Idea. Like, there's a lot of women who are married who are with dudes that are really not their type because he asked them. Pressured. Yeah, he pressured her and he asked her to get married. Women want to be married. This the only dude who asked. Mm. Some dudes, people have been together for 15 years. And re- women, like women, women can get gut. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, when a man don't like you, you can't change his mind for the most part. It, there's n- not a cartwheel you can do. But when, when women don't like you, you can, you pursue long enough, for, you know, they, they start, you know, they start going. And so it didn't matter whether she liked him, whether she was his, he was her first option or not. He provided the consistency and the pursuit and she probably became more open the more he tried. A hundred, I'm with you. A hundred. I, I appreciate that. Um, okay, so uh, so obviously, you know, because obviously the situation, um, you know, with, uh, you know, it's a situation with Will, uh, the Ron situation is what happened. Um, you know, we know that obviously the, the like you said, the, the group chat had its own kind of madness and, and stuff. It's been one of my last few questions I want to bring to the table. Um, but for you, obviously, looking at the situation, uh, was there, because it seems like there's clear sides, right? I don't know. This is my perception. This is my perception of the situation. It seems like yourself, Will, maybe, maybe William, and we've got Laron, Chaz, we've got the likes of Jonathan, because obviously they're doing their show and everything, right? Um, is that the clear denomination of lines, or is that just is that did that start from the very beginning, or is that just something that's come over time? Not for me, like uh, you know, part of my purpose on life is to uplift and protect and help black people. I'm rooting for everybody black, and I'm saying so. Like uh, I'm rooting for Chaz, I'm rooting for rooting for Leron, Jonathan, all them brothers. But you know, I will say that uh, you know, like I'm the closest to Will. You know, what I'm saying Will, I, I am close to Will, but like. Me being close to Will doesn't keep me from being solid with LaRon. Like me and LaRon ain't close. I'm not close to Chaz, but like I'm not I would never snake LaRon just because I'm because I because Will is my friend. Like Will, I consider him a friend, but I wouldn't do nothing behind LaRon's back to snake him. I wouldn't do Chaz dirt. I wouldn't do I wouldn't do none of the guys dirt. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I have respect and I actually have love for every every individual soul that was a part of this experience because it's so hard to put yourself out here. And, you know, you see the comments like uh, the people who watch this show, there's some really classy people who watch this show. But then again, there's also uh, some of the comments and some of the hate uh, you may see is bottom of the barrel. And it's, uh, it, it, it's something that's kind of, it's the mentality that's keeping us where we at. You know, in reality, I see beauty in all the books, but to me, there's no real division as far as how I feel. But in reality, yes, there is division in regards to them. They may be doing events. I may not be a part of the events, but it's not because of my alliance to will. Like to me, them doing a, them doing, what's the party called? The reunion party for me. I love the, them doing the reunion party, but I had a horrible experience at the reunion. You know what I'm saying? Me being on a reunion, like it, it, it was hurtful to me. The, the reunion hurt my feelings. You know, so for me, it's it's hard for me to celebrate uh, people degrading each other, uh, people cursing each other out, people fighting. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I can't have a party on something that I stand against, but it has nothing to do with who's throwing the party. But like my feelings were hurt after the, the reunion because I'm trying to blame, I'm trying to unionize people. Uh, what I do in real life is bringing people together. And the reunion for me was everything against what I stand for. So I can't support, I can support the part, I can share it, but but that was a negative experience for me. So I can't party, I can't, some people can party when their mama die. You know what I'm saying? I can't. I get that. I, I, I totally understand that. I'm, I'm, I'm with that. I'm on rocks with that. Um, was there any anything else on the, on the show that kind of we missed that you'd love to just be able to address and bring some light to? 
any of the particular moments maybe that you were involved in, maybe you wanted to bring some light to anything on the show that you felt like needed to bring to light to? No, like I, I didn't, I'm just, I was just happy to make it out without really playing <laughs> myself. Cause this is, I don't realize this many people watch this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've been all over, uh, I've been in different countries. Yeah. People would recognize me from being on the show. Trust uh, me. Different cities, I thought, like, I'd be looking at the ratings and thinking that it's only two, three hundred, four hundred thousand people watching the show. Nah, people got bootlegged. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, yep. a lot of people are watching this show. And uh, um, I was just glad to make it out alive because this show is is not a safe place for black men. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's, it's, and I can see why so many men wouldn't want to be on this show because, like, in my life, you know, I'm a very respected person. Like, in real life, I, I get respect and I'm, and mostly because I am respectful, very respectful to people. So I get it in return. Uh, this is the most disrespect that I've been in my life. And, and like, so for me, like if, if you're a person who wants to believe in people um, and you want to maintain a positive attitude towards people, this show, especially for a man, is not the show. I wouldn't advise no nigga to get on the show. You know what I'm saying? Because you got so many broken women who are home watching this show and they're projecting their unsuccessful relationships. On, on on you and uh in the comments and you can say like hey ignore the comments ignore this ignore that but like you, you're human you have feelings like you know now i have i have a lot more empathy for real and i always had it but i have a lot more empathy for real uh real, real celebrities you know what i'm saying people who really got to go through this because you know you can be a person who's doing everything you feel like you need to do in life and supporting everybody and you have thousands of people sitting at home uh, degrading you, you know what I'm saying? With me, I can see somebody doing wrong. I can see LeBron doing wrong. I can see Chaz making mistakes. But what I would prefer to do, because I care about people, reach out to them, hey, bro, you should move like this. Here's a therapist. Here's this credit right. You want this person? That's how you repair the black community. Um, the people who be at home comment, and probably even in this chat, it's like, you know, because I, I look at you as a safe space. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I genuinely think you're a safe space, but not the people who be in your chat. Some of them are uplifting. Uh, some of them are going to keep us where we at. And like you know, a, a, as a community, we should be in repair mode, uh, not trying to tear each other down mode. And, and and that's how I live my life. You know what I'm saying? People ask me, they don't know how I live. And for me, it, it was hurtful to see. Uh, it showed me a different side of the black community that I don't even know if I needed to see. You know, because I've been around so much positivity. I'm around beautiful black women, I'm around beautiful black men, I'm around, you know, they come into my events, our shows, it's all love. Then I see this and it's like, dang, like, I thought we were a little further ahead than what we really are. Okay, no, I, I get that. I, def- I definitely understand that. I can, I can see where you're, where you're coming from in that respect. Um, that, you know, sometimes as an audience, um, I included too, can sometimes, you know, be very hard um, okay. and, you know, and try to, you know, we can be doting on, on people as well. So, I, I mean, I get that. Listen, no. I'm not, I'm going to be mad at that and I, I understand it. You know what I mean? It's not easy to be in a place where you can be criti- critiqued from anywhere on any side. Um, yeah. you know, and, uh, and I don't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. You're good. You're good, bro. It's not about critique. It's the purpose behind critique. Okay. Because critique is perfectly fine. But the intention behind your critique, are you critiquing to lift yourself up? Or are you critiquing to bring someone else up? And what I want to see our community do is we call constructive criticism. And like in order to build community, I want to see us critique with intention. And in order to critique with intention is you relay messages in a way where that person can receive it and build, not to tear that person down. You know, you know, and that's Critique is good. We need critique. Like the men on this show, and even the women, and excuse my language, have been doing a lot of fuck shit. You know what I'm saying? So all of these niggas deserve critique, including myself. But the intention behind the critique, is it to build you or to build them? That's what I want. I want us to have constructive critique, uh, just so we're not wasting our words. You know, I get that. I, I definitely understand that. Um, I think you're, you're you're making some good points in terms of, like I said, the intent behind the critique. Is it to build or is it to to restore or is it to destroy? That's, that's a fair point. I can't I can't 
I can't fight against that point, you know what I mean? And it's something I have to, you know, I've also been thinking about myself even recently in terms of um, some of the reviews that I do. You know, I'm I'm trying to check my intent at the times as well because, you know, like I said, I want to be able to restore, not just destroy, you know what I mean? Like we, there's a time and a season for when certain harsh critique goes in, but it's a lot of times where I agree again, you know, um, where there can be restoration yeah. in the way that we deliver some of the information yeah. or how we feel yeah. about certain things that we see. I, yeah. I, I can rock with that. I can tell you a safe space. I, can, I know I can tell LeRon to share things with you. Um, what he shared with you, you haven't, you haven't shared that with any, like, I can tell like there's a difference, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm not necessarily aiming that at you because I think, I think you do a fair job of uh, of your critique and being fair, but uh, just uh, I just want to let the audience know and just just our people in general, just like hey, we, we got some work to do, but we we too far behind to be holding ourselves there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Let's 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 take the next steps and um, like you know I've seen a lot of fuck shit on this on this season, and let's yes you doing f shit, but let's not. I see good in you too, so let's get you to this level. You know, so like that's why I don't have anything against any of the brothers because I still see beauty in all of the men, even though they own some BS. I want to take them from, hey, you doing this? Hey, I remember doing that. Iran's 31 years old. We was 31, 32. Um, people be 50 forgetting what they were doing at 31 and 32. Now, these are men that we can work with. These are good men that we need to to help build, uh, just like the women. You know, so yeah, that's, that's really it. No, I appreciate it, man. It's, it's, it's like I said, it's a good point to make. And I think it's something that we have to all consider um, as a community, you know, to, to uplift one another as well. So I'm not going to be against that point at all. I'd rather highlight that as a, as a great point to, um, uh, to point that, to, to highlight that point, to bring that to, to the foreground. So I'm with it. Um, bringing that interview to a close for yourself. Um, mm-hmm. What were the learns from the show? You know, what were the learns from the show? What did, what did, what did Dom learn from the show um what I, learned, I probably say, i have a different answer every time anyone asks me that <laughs> um it made me more appreciative of of the people who i'm around uh the people who are close to me made me more appreciative of the women that i've dated uh you know for instance um one of the women that i dated i reached out to her about being uh being my ex on the date and if she would have came to this show, people would have looked at me like I was crazy, you know. Uh, but it just um, it just made me more appreciative of my past, my friends, and and uh, just kind of kind of brought me back down to because like uh, I don't know, it, it just made me more appreciative. I love that. So for you, it's more about the appreciation and gratitude that you're gonna you've got from being in that space. And being able to see things from a particular perspective. Yeah, okay. awesome. oh, I rock to that. Um, any particular projects or anything that you're doing at the moment that we can get behind, support, offer, you know, our, 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 our manpower to? Man, not really, man. Um, so, you know, I, I do I do these art shows uh, once a month, once every other month. I uh, just had one in Mexico City. Um, Fantastic. Which is my, my favorite city in the world. Um, you know, so... Um, so uh, I do them in Dallas, having one April 27th. Uh, so just uh, bringing everybody together, helping them experience black art, uh, good music, and a good time. Um, I, I frequent I frequent where you're from, though. Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm from the UK. Yeah, I, I've been to Ghana once. Uh, hey, yeah. trying to do a little something maybe this year, isn't it? So we'll go to Ghana again. So if you're ready. Were you born? Um, were you born in Ghana or born in UK? No, no, I was born actually UK. So I was born in London. I was born in uh, South West Battersea. So I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, 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 but I've started going to Ghana the last few years. So maybe this next year, I want to. This year coming, I'll go to Ghana probably the end of the year again. So yeah, I want to try and drag a few people there. Yeah, I went maybe six years ago. So I went the year before the year returned. Oh I, yeah. Yeah. So I went from November to December, the beginning of December, and yeah. I left in like mid December. But I saw. The energy How people coming in. It was it was nuts. So I stayed in uh stayed in Osu. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Central, Central, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to uh what's it, Houdin's the, the fashion, the, the free. Yeah. Yeah, so I bought man, I spent so much money bringing back fabrics because my sister, she made me some clothing from the fabrics and and uh, I left Sick. my my door unlocked one day. It was in the backseat of my 
somebody stole stole all my I spent so much money on, on that fabric. Well, in Ghana or in the U.S. Back when I got back to Nashville, Tennessee. I was gonna say because most people in Ghana is pretty safe. You leave, you can leave stuff there mm -mm. more time, and it gonna come back and be there. Not in Nashville. You can't leave your car door unlocked. And I feel like somebody <laughs> stole my fabric. So every time I'm in Nashville, I'm driving down the street looking for a homeless nigga with uh, African <laughs> with all the fabrics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Next time I, I'll be in London pretty soon, man. If you don't mind, I, I, shout I, me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout me, man. Maybe we'll be around. Gonna, uh, Rum, rum, rum kitchen or something. Hey, yeah, rum kitchen is nice still. Yeah. It's, a, it's a vibe still. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a vibe. Are you usually east when you come? Now, I'm, uh, what, what east? Uh, Shoreditch is technically east, right? Yeah, so yeah. technically, yeah. yeah last time I stayed, I stayed in Shoreditch and uh, I stayed, stayed in, in Shoreditch. So uh, I, I move around a little bit. My, my homegirl, she stay in, uh, she stay in Stratford. Uh, kind of oh, yes, the, I the Olympic. Yeah. Uh, yes, I stayed in. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're calm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah shout me whenever you're, whenever you're down oh, next. Just yeah. shout me. You know what I mean? Last I had, I had, I was with Phil and Phil from a few seasons back as well. So, a few other people as well from different shows. I put a ring on yeah. it. I had Michael and Shay come to, and I saw them. So yeah, whenever you're down, shout me. And yeah, man. If I'm, or if I don't come, I'm, I'm gonna probably be in Houston before. Maybe I'll be in Houston probably August. Yeah. So after I'm trying to arrange a date for the show. So yeah, um, I love what you're doing. I just got to give you your credit. Um, thank you, man. What you're doing. Is, is it feels therapeutic um so like uh it's uh the toughest thing about being on your platform is like you're having a public therapy session and yeah yeah, yeah. And it's tough for people who've never thought about certain things but mm. i think if you've had that conversation with yourself family a therapist it makes it a little bit of an easier process but um mm. but yeah c c congratulations well no, so appreciate it, honestly man i appreciate it. thank you for coming on sure. sharing your heart and you're being you authentic and i appreciate that as well um and uh, yeah we take your points on as well and hopefully we we, we also grow as well as a community so appreciate thank you very much for that John. appreciate it Likewise. Likewise. audience thank you so much we appreciate y'all so much for joining us today it's been an amazing conversation myself and dom uh from ready to love listen there's still more to get because uh we've got a few more people to come onto the show as well um but uh yeah look look forward to more content coming out we'll be at we'll be back out tonight a little bit about about an hour's time uh for our members only live we'll be discussing a few things but it's been a great conversation if you're watching the replay shout out to you guys leave a comment down below as well um and we we honestly appreciate uh, this time spent so don't do anything you shouldn't do out there all right guys all right keep it cute keep it classy